Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Derpzilla channel. Today, I'm gonna to have a continuation of my recent theme, which is the rear bumper section of my 2021 Camaro ZL1, as you can picture it here. It's still up on my quick jack, haven't taken it down since my last video, and I actually still have my bumper off of the car. Now, my previous video, I replaced the taillights. I went with the Auto Addict Umbra C8 style LED taillights, you can see here for that video, check it out up here. But what we did is we removed the, the uh, rear bumper for that and I left it off so I can knock out the rear diffuser replacement that we're gonna be doing in this video. Now, I'm replacing this OEM diffuser right here. It's in the gloss black, and I'm gonna be going with the Anderson Composites full carbon fiber single piece rear diffuser. Now, there's two versions that I'm aware of with Anderson Composites. One is kind of a smooth version. It looks pretty much very similar to the OEM style, and then the one I went with actually adds some additional like diffuser fins here in the center section. I think they look pretty cool and give it a little bit more aggressive of a look. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to push forward with this. We're going to get this diffuser taken off the bumper, get the new one installed, and we're going to get this bumper back up on the car. Here we are at the rear of the car and you can see the Umbra C8 style LED taillights already installed. That's from my previous video, which I've already mentioned, but it's uh, the link should still be up here. And that's also when I removed this bumper. So you can actually replace your diffuser without pulling the bumper. It's kind of uh, a little bit more of uh, gymnastic type maneuvers. Uh, I figure I'm a little bit older and less flexible than Spider-Man. So I have my bumper already removed. So I'm gonna just stick with this method of doing the diffuser replacement. Now, if you wanna see how to remove this bumper, I'm actually going to post that footage from my previous video into this video, just make it easy so you don't have to jump videos if you don't want. If you have seen my previous video on my taillight install, you can skip forward and, and skip past the whole bumper removal portion. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna cue that footage for the bumper removal, and then we'll jump in with the diffuser. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and begin on removing this rear bumper here. And a quick overview of what you're gonna need to do. Go under here and you're in the rear wheel well area, the back portion, of course. You have three T15s you're gonna to have to remove. I have ACS rock guards, as you can see here. So yours may look a little bit different if you do not have these. And then if we swing underneath the car by the diffuser, you're gonna have a T15 here and then some uh, seven millimeters, you got four here four on the other side and also another uh, T15. And then you have in the middle, I believe you have to take these off, but you have a two seven millimeters and another T15. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this. Once we have these all removed, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have to peel back this um, liner insert here. And I'll show you what we need to do once we have this uh, pulled out of the way. I have all of the main bolts removed, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this T15 up here. Just give me a little bit more uh, leeway on pulling this uh, fender liner up and out of the way so we can access everything right under here. Pulled the liner out just a little bit. I'll show you guys what we're looking for in here. If I can get this light in there, but uh, let's see here, we got air, there we go. And you kind of see in here, but you got two harnesses here and a plug up here. Those have the little red tabs you need to push out and then you can release the harnesses. So make sure you release both of those. And then also this one, which is for your side markers. Here are the di dynamic side markers. But then also kind of sneakily, there is a seven millimeter bolt here upwards. It's uh, right above one of these uh, bolt clip here for the liner. So you wanna remove that. Your three plugs, do that on both sides and then we can pull in to pop out this side portion of our bumper. I'm gonna go ahead and knock those out. We'll come back here and we'll see if I can get this thing to snap out. And then we'll move up into the trunk area, which I already opened up. We have a few things we have to do in the trunk and then we can go ahead and get this bumper off. 
Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and do the trunk portion. So you're gonna open up your trunk and you have these little clips here. Uh, remove them with some kind of a clip removal tool, you know, something like this or a soft plastic one. Might be a little bit better so you don't scratch it up. And then you're gonna remove these little covers on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out real quick and attempt to catch this bird and <laughs> get them outside. So maybe I'll do a two for one here. There is a plug right here. It's kind of weird, but it's got, it's got a normal clip you have to push down and kind of pop it out. You need to remove that, otherwise you'll have your bumper stuck to your uh, car as you try to pull the bumper off. So just wanted to point that out. I have the sides unclipped and kind of a trick. You just want to get kind of the edge. Don't reach in too deep because then you're like pulling on the liner and some other stuff and you're not actually releasing. You need to get kind of the edge underneath the liner and then you can release these clips pretty much straight out like this and then I believe it's gonna have to come out like this so this is gonna be the tricky part um, I'm trying not to drop it on the ground so I'm gonna need both hands for this um, I'll let you guys know any tips if I find anything out as I'm releasing the rest of this bumper and hopefully getting this thing out and on my bumper stand on the other side of the car the bumper came off not too bad and maybe a little better view on that wire I was telling you about this one right here you want to make sure you remove that otherwise you'll go to pull the bumper off and it'll still be tethered to the rear of your car pretty much just start at the end pull straight out clip it around get to this edge to the other side and then just work your way get your fingers in there until it completely comes unclipped and here is the bumper stand as I uh, spoke about you can see it lays on it pretty nice here or these are the clips that were holding the bumper in the center section. And then I think it also clips uh, onto here maybe, but then it has these little feeder clips here. And we're back. You either skipped here if you've watched my previous video or you just finished watching the bumper removal process. And now we have our bumper uh, up on the Harbor Freight stand. I went ahead and flipped it so we can get a better look at what we're working with here on the diffuser. Now, if you watched my uh, five part front end conversion video, you'll be familiar with these lovely clips right here. These are the ones where you just kind of actually push the little nub here and get your trim removal tool. I would like to use the metal one you may have seen me a few times using and these pop out relatively easy. Just be very careful. Uh, if you break them, um, you know, they, I think they're like $5 if you order the, these ones from GM. There's some kind of cheaper replica ones that are of lesser quality. You can get a bunch of them pretty cheap, but preferably you want to not break these and retain the original ones. Now we're going to have, looks like five on each side, of course, but you also have this wiring harness. You're going to have to remove all of these lovely plunger, little plug harness you know, hold down, tie downs, same thing, use your trim removal tool, pop all these out. Everything that's attached to the diffuser, so you're not trying to pull the diffuser and then yanking on your harness. And you see here we also have our parking, uh, look on parking sensor, parking sensors, but you don't have to worry about any of this stuff up, this is on the bumper, but everything we're attached to, the diffuser, we're gonna have to remove. Now, on top of these beautiful clips we have here, we have the even more lovely alligator clips, I believe these things are called, Sometimes these come off easily. Sometimes they come off like uh, like a nightmare story here. You don't want to mangle these unless you have some extras on hand. I don't think I do. <laughs> I probably should have grabbed some because they do tend to break. And you go ahead and you get these bad boys removed. Shouldn't be too bad. And I think it looks like one here. You got one down here. Another one here. And then, of course, when they're going to be pulling everything out, you got these uh, clips in here and uh, looks like some more clips here but yeah we'll mess with that figure out all that out now also if you are planning on um, retaining your uh, deflectors it's probably be a good time maybe now to you know get these off while it's on the stand here and stable it's a phillips head here and i think it's just a clip and then that de deflector will pop out and there's a little plug or not no, no plug because these are actually just reflectors and not lit unless you have an aftermarket one that does actually run a power source. So I'm gonna actually be using a completely new reflector, but I don't think I have extra screws. I don't think it comes with screws, so I might just steal the, the screw from these on both sides so I can attach it to the new diffuser, which is in that big fragile box. We haven't even looked at that yet. I'll show you that uh, once I get this diffuser off, we'll take a look at that 
it's a pretty nice looking piece but uh, with carbon fiber and the clear coat and everything i'm always worried about getting these things scratched so as you can see here we got a lot to work to do i'm gonna go ahead and set this up out of the way and i'm gonna start knocking all these pieces out and hopefully we can get this diffuser separated without too much of a headache once this is off i'll probably wipe everything down in here um, get it nice and clean for the new diffuser now that i looked at the uh, rear bumper here a little bit closer it appears actually this plastic center section is actually part of the bumper and not the diffuser The diffuser actually clips around this so you don't actually need to re remove uh, a number of these wire harness pieces i believe and uh, i think that applies all the way around um so i don't think we have to mess with that at all which is good because it's just you know one less thing to do now if you watch my bumper removal we'll have a screw down here i believe it's a t15 make sure you remove that and of course if you're doing this uh, with the bumper still on your car you're gonna have to remove this as well and then we're gonna go ahead and start removing these clips and i will move around and hopefully you can see what i'm doing here but uh, pretty self-explanatory as covered earlier so i'm gonna get all of these white clips removed and then we're gonna move on to the alligator clips and hope for the best Went ahead and removed two of the alligator clips and as mentioned they are a total pain in the diffuser but but uh what i found to kind of work is i'd get some pliers or the middle one was kind of hard because it was uh not a lot of room and then i'll actually grab it on the outside and squeeze it and fold it and that kind of opens up the teeth a little bit this way and i can kind of pull it out without shredding the clip and completely damaging the alligator clip and then i'll get two sets of pliers and i'll just kind of flex it back into its normal position uh, i got the other two that way and i'm going to try doing it here the camera's kind of in the way so it's gonna be a little bit harder hopefully i'll try not to block everything but uh we'll see if i can reproduce what i did before His teeth don't want to release whatever so this is what you kind of end up with uh fold it over the teeth are mostly intact and then we'll just bend this outward so let's see if i can do that and restructure the clip back to its mostly original form All of the clips that I had scattered around here, I pulled off of the diffuser and tossed them aside so they're not bouncing around everywhere. I did somehow misplace one of the white clips. It fell somewhere in here. So hopefully when I get everything separated, I'll find it. But uh, now it, it does appear the top, you can see the top clips are notched. So when they go through the little cutout, they actually clip into place on top of the little white snaps you put in here to, to, to uh, hold it firm against the bumper. Um, so that means these are a little bit more difficult to get these to pop through. Once we can pass the end ones, these ones are, are, are actually thinner than the cutouts. These will fall right through. And then that's the same, it looks like with all the other ones. So hopefully if I can, as long as I get these end ones to go through without damaging these clips, we should be home free. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this thing to separate. I'm gonna try just reaching in here and pulling this apart and then see if I can just manhandle it through without breaking it. Okay, it looks like I lied this clip actually you have to remove this wire because it's one giant clip and this piece travels through it and uh, you have to remove this
This is a super flimsy clip, so kind of a pain to get this thing out. So I'm gonna go get the other one now. Looks like even though it's not attached to the diffuser, to give you some leeway on getting this diffuser off and some flex on here, you do need to remove these bolts. There's one on each side. Looks like it's a seven millimeter. And we continue trying to separate this thing without. Okay, that was a pain. <laughs> I pretty much had to rotate the bumper and lay it uh, in this position. You can see here with the, you know, the pretty side facing up. And then I kind of crawled underneath and had to snap this end diagonal clip that goes into this one right here. And once you kind of pry that out, and you just have to work your way down the diffuser if you can see it and just squeeze these line them up and pop them through and then you can work the entire diffuser uh, off of the bumper uh, it may be easier if you remove this whole plastic piece and get it out of your way um, that may be an option but it looks like this is probably gonna be the easiest way to actually uh, drop the carbon fiber diffuser on here. This is going to be even harder because I had to use some flexibility of the diffuser to help get some of these snaps out. And it, as we all know, carbon fiber lacks that flexibility. And so, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to get this stuff all to uh, <laughs> snap in. So I'm sure it's going to be a pain. Everything has been wiped down, cleaned up pretty good. I mean, if, I didn't do like a full detailed job on this, of course, but. Uh, you know, got it uh, relatively clean, uh, underside, all around here, which just kind of had a bunch of dust from sitting for so long. And I went ahead and unboxed this beautiful Anderson Composite rear diffuser. And you can see the arrow that's been added to this thing. Now, who knows if this actually adds any kind of actual arrow, but, you know, every little bit helps, potentially. And... Uh, you know, here's the OEM piece for comparison, kind of propped out of the way. And you can note the, you know, relatively big differences, especially here. You have these like fins, uh, almost like an air channel here. That's just a flat piece. And then it's got this nice sculpting around here for the, uh, for the exhaust cutout. It looks about the same dimensions, but it kind of, uh, it's a little bit, a little bit different how it's set up here compared to here, where it seems like it's just kind of like a, like a you know, a curve versus here kind of curves up and then splits out for these four wings here. So you have the four wings. And then of course, same thing over here. This has no wing, just flat, pretty boring. Um, and then of course you have your cutout for your reflectors here. So this will retain your reflectors. I have the smoked ones I'll be using. I'll show those once I install them. As far as, um, you know, the holes all look to be in the same place. You get the three here. This is the one that actually uh, attaches it to the bumper. These will be attaching it to the actual car for your uh, bumper install. Then you have your four here. And uh, actually it's five here to match that. Looks the same. And then underneath, you don't have tabs. Just like if you saw my front end conversion video, you actually have these little flexible, like, I don't know if these are called flexible tabs. So these actually pass through and then you just bend them in place versus the OEM bumper. See that these are actually tabs. So that's going to be different. We'll see how that actually pans out. Um, you know, they help, they're holding strong on the front of the car. Shouldn't be an issue, but it is something you need to be aware of. And I'm going to go behind this underneath this and actually straighten those out. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Straighten those out, get that ready to go, and then we're gonna try getting this thing on here. Hopefully, it's not a nightmare. Did notice one issue. Here is my smoked reflectors. They're modeled after the uh, OEM reflectors, so exact same design, one screw, and then you have one little clip that just snaps in and uh, and actually like grips onto the little, kind of like a cutout here, okay? No biggie, pretty simple. But 
with the Anderson diffuser, it's got two screw holes. How am I supposed to take a clip and have it work with a screw hole? Well, I have one screw hole right here. And it doesn't, of course, this is for the other side, so it's sitting weird, but yeah, so it sits kind of in the groove on the other side. It just kind of sits in there, but the screw hole doesn't, I don't think lines up. Um, and it doesn't sit flush over here because it's expecting a freaking clip snap. I have, I've stuck in some microfibers just to open up a little bit of space here. So maybe I can get better, uh, you know, touching of these tabs here. And since it does use all flex tabs, flex tabs are going to pass through all these little notches up here, the side notches here. Before I actually try to get this diffuser to uh, snap into place, I went ahead and actually did decide to remove this big chonky plastic brace piece that's right here. And really, all you have to do is get all these little uh, wire harness clips, just pop them all out around the sides. The middle area, you have to unplug this one clip right here. Okay, even better. I was able to remove the harness without much difficulty. These little um, parking sensors are kind of the most difficult. They have red tabs, you want to just slide that out. And then I just got a flat head wedged in there and I was able to pull each of these out. And then you have this clip right here. It's just a squeeze clip, pull it out. Same thing, squeeze clip on the thing, on the harness, pull this one out. You have two up here, they just have the flip up kind. So you pull them up above the tab and then you can actually pull these out. And now I have all this room, don't have to worry about the harness flopping around. And I actually was able to wipe everything down. So I'm going to try to figure out how I can get this diffuser to line up. I'm trying to think if I want to set the diffuser on here and then just drop the bumper onto it, maybe. So I'm going to kind of brainstorm a few things here and we'll see what we'll come up with. Here we have it. Turns out I actually recorded me installing this and rolling around for a good hour trying to get this thing installed on my little tripod here and I didn't realize my GoPro battery had died. So <laughs> there's not gonna be much to show. I will give you a quick overview of everything I did to get it installed. Um, I did go and try to watch a few diffuser videos and uh, they're pretty much like, and boom, it's installed. Yeah, um, I definitely struggle with this, I'm not gonna lie. Carbon fiber is not flexible. So if you're doing a plastic diffuser, it flexes with the bumper a little bit easier carbon fiber does not flex you know at all so just a quick overview i ended up installing it how you see it here i set my bumper on some microfibers and it looks like it slid off of course and now it's probably just getting scratched but uh set some microfibers on each end i sat my bumper i tried doing it on the harbor freight super standard here and it was just sliding around and so that was a pain but i ended up flipping it like this, paint side up, as you can see, set it on the ground here so it took out the flex of the bumper so everything kind of lined up a little bit better. Then I straightened out the tabs, those stupid flex tabs, laid them pretty much straight out here, bent the two in the corner here because Anderson Composites, I guess, I don't know if that's just it's cheaper to manufacture. They have flex tabs here instead of on the actual bumper, you have this big, slotted tab unit thing here that doesn't they have just two more flex tabs and they get kind of in the way so i f actually bent them out of the way just until i could get everything installed i laid it down here lined everything up as center as i could pushed it in and then i worked my way to the edge here and i pretty much had to pull the flex tabs and get them to finally slot in by lifting up the bumper squeezing these in and getting those to fall in and once i was able to do that I did the other side, it was total kind of a pain. And I'll go in underneath. All right, here we go with some little bit of lighting. My actual normal light died, but these are the flex tabs. And there's a little bit of a gap in the corners. So I tried to flex these in this manner to help minimize that gap. The main issue is this gap here. You can see here a lot worse than it actually is. And these are the stupid flex tabs they go and they go through the tabs, you have flex tabs going through the tab. Normally, OEM diffuser, it has that slot thing here. I believe these would then fit through that. Um, but yeah, we don't have that. 
so I have two of these tabs and uh, so yeah I ended up pulling it as tight as I could and trying to pull this bumper and diffuser together and then here hopefully you can see it but I bent the in ones three upwards and then these two downwards and just make sure you have clearance of this tab here for when it goes back into the car um, same on this side you can see that and I pull these down because this helps you know get rid of any kind of gap that you have between the middle of the bumper and the diffuser same deal with, on this side I'm gonna go ahead and get top side I'll show you the kind of uh, the questionable areas the gap and uh, you know you can take a look of what you're gonna be dealing with all right fitment here super good no gaps at all you can kind of see I mean a little bit of light I have, I'm trying to light through it so maybe you see a little bit here but I mean really that's not bad actually on the passenger side turned out pretty good but you can see just a little bit and then you have a little bit of a gap here i didn't end up not sanding things i just didn't see where the heck i could sand it to make it better i mean I, if you're good with body paneling and stuff like that you could probably sand it a little bit better but you do can you can see a little bit of the gaps here you can probably pull those flex tabs maybe a little bit tighter i might work on that to see if i can pull this a little bit tighter here it'll be super hard to see overall i think this side fit really good the side that i had the most trouble with was this side as you can see a little bit of a gap here but this portion i guess fit okay uh it, i guess it's supposed to be wrapping around the end of the bumper which it just doesn't do um you know i think this would be better mold perhaps they made this a couple millimeters longer on each end then you could actually for easily have it wrap around maybe um but you know not too bad so you know here on this side this is the driver's side and then the end cap on the passenger side but overall it fits pretty good i'm going to try to figure out what i want to do with these deflectors <laughs> or not yeah deflector reflectors whatever these are um i'm not sure if i want to maybe drill this hole out a little bit bigger so i can fit the clip through maybe um so i'm going to mess with this uh, before i then get this bumper back on the harbor freight stand and we reassemble the inside of the bumper on to the re, uh, reflectors here and I actually found instead of just trying to drill out this and making it so this maybe would clip in uh, I mean if you're good at that kind of stuff you know have at it that's probably the optimal way uh, but I got it to sit pretty flush nice and tight it's not gonna go anywhere with just a single screw but what I did to make it sit a little bit better is I actually just took my Dremel and cut the clip piece off uh, made it I cut it you know so it's hor you know went horizontally uh, in line with this one so I got my Dremel just sliced it like this and then I sat it into there it sat nice and tight flushed into the into the diffuser and then I bought that single screw with the washer to hold this piece in so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this I'll show you what I'm talking about and then we'll just drop it in and then I'll get this thing screwed in and we're gonna go ahead and get this bumper flipped around onto the Harbor Freight Super Bumper Holder Express and you can see if it will focus probably should have my Sony out for this but uh sliced off the clip and then if i don't drop it drops in there nice and flush doesn't wobble around like it was with the clip end and then i'll put that screw in here and we'll be good to go on the reflectors bumper is back up on the harbor freight bumper stand and you know this side really came together pretty good um you know, these holes are a little bit mismatched i think i'll be able to squeeze this in maybe and get that to line up you know and you notice how the bumper is recessed behind the actual diffuser here so it sits pretty flush not you know there's no extra room in here really i mean it's not like i could slide this thing either way but if i come over here check this out does not sit flush over the bumper and so this bolt and this bolt are significantly off this is pushed out and i mean no real way to fix this time to reassemble everything so i'm going to start grabbing the plastic piece here i'm going to wipe that down i haven't cleaned that one yet i cleaned the other stuff i'll get that moved over to the bumper one t15 will go here to hold the um, plastic support piece in place and then we can go ahead and get all the wiring harness reattached 
So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip forward to that and I'll show you everything as it's reassembled if you don't remember. Working on this plastic, I guess this reinforcement piece for the bumper. And uh, so if you disassembled your bumper completely like I have, you have to of course reassemble it. And a few key pointers I wanna point out for you guys, you're gonna have to run your diffuser little flex clips through. There's gonna be one here, one here, so make sure you don't actually tighten those to the bumper until you actually pass it through this uh, plastic reinforcement piece. And then there's two here, of course, and then it actually will line up and clip in uh, into the bumper itself. Um, I'm not sure, oh yeah, right. Uh, if you can kind of see, yeah, little clips right here. And there's a little clip here. This looks like this one slid out, so I'm gonna have to push that one back into place, it looks like. Uh, and I have to get that in. But then the hard part is you have to get this screw, this seven millimeter in. You're gonna have to really kind of bend this thing up, pull this tab up, and then punch the screw in, and that will center everything. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna have to get that clip fixed. It looks like it buckled under probably when I was messing with that. And uh, so you don't use any of the alligator clips anymore, so those are all gone. So really you can destroy them during the um, uninstall of the old diffuser. You don't have to worry about bending them back like I was. And uh, yeah, on top of that, this piece right here, um, it's putting a ton of flex on this diffuser. And it's, so it lines up here fine, but it has this ridge on it. I don't know if this used to like sit flush with the old diffuser, I can't remember. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is I might just Dremel shave off or cut off this lip here, just this little ridge, and then I can just slide it down and bolt it in. It shouldn't affect you know movement or anything like that. So to do that safely, I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt it here and then just I'll sand this down or whatever and then reinstall it. Took that little ridge off. Um, so I'm hoping that will then allow this to sit uh, a little bit more flush. It's still gonna apply some pressure just be, looks like because of the length of this thing. Um, I don't really want it to be putting all this pressure, but uh, you know, here we go. So if I put it, yeah, so sh I'll, I'll see if that slides in. Um, I don't, I think this will be fine, but uh, yeah, I don't want this to bow, to bow down like awkwardly. Uh, and with that lip, definitely was doing that. So we'll see if this uh, helps fix that minor inconvenience. Had this uh, stabilizer or whatever piece this is, still bowing out. I'm pretty sure Anderson just cut this hole uh, too low. I think that's probably my issue because normally I think this lip would sit over and flush with this, so this would actually stick up a little higher. That little lip would actually brace this, but because they cut this so low and I can't really move it, um, I shaved it down and I was able to get it. It bows still a little bit, but before, I mean, it was gonna probably break. So kind of a crappy <laughs> workaround, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna get the wiring harness up here. I'm gonna twist these or, or fold these flex pieces in to lock this piece in. Other than that, I think this is this support brace piece is installed. The wiring harness is back in place. Just a quick uh, flyby. You can slow this down if you want, if you don't remember how to rewire it, if you're forced to. I believe I have it wired right, but uh, you can plug in the side markers. I think I unplugged them for no reason at one point, but uh, you want these two um, plugs here to be on the driver's side. These will plug back into the main uh, car harness and then you can reuse all of the little tie downs. I don't like these plugs, these ones. I mean, you don't get a satisfying click when you put these bad boys back in place. Just make sure you do the red locking tabs on all of these plugs, relock everything. Don't forget there is a hidden plug under here, also with a red locking tab. Make sure you plug that one back in. Um, I think I have these in the right spots. I could be wrong, but the wires just need to be you know, coupled close to the bumper, so, and out of the way, so it don't interfere with anything. And of course you got these two plugs up here. These are your um, license plate lights. And uh, so don't forget those. Parking sensors. I guess this is maybe more parking sensor controllers or something like that, actually it says. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. Sonar maybe of some sort, maybe, maybe works with parking sensors. You're gonna have this plug, um, this is gonna be unplugged. This will be plugged back in once you get the bumper reattached. This is one of that you have to make sure you unplug before you pull your bumper off, or this will be a surprise and you'll have some issues. Also note, there is no corresponding clip to snap these into because they used to clip onto one of the clips that had actually was a 
dual clip slash little wire mount whatever that's gone now since we have all these flex clips and uh yeah so once again kind of give you a better view of the wires i took a minute to re remember where everything went but it mostly falls into place so everything has reassembled onto the bumper and we can proceed rear bumper is on and real quick for the actual installation of the rear bumper i'm going to pull the footage from my taillight video just like i did for taking the bumper off so we're going to show you that video real quick and then we'll jump back here and wrap this one up All right, there we have it. Kind of a pain. I'm gonna have to get the hardware in, the seven millimeter on each side. And then we have, I believe there's seven millimeter on each of the support brackets underneath. I'll show you guys that real quick. And we're getting this thing buttoned up. Had a little bit of issue getting this side. Kept kind of rubbing on the bottom of the tail leg here. I had to really push it in and then kind of mount, you know, brace my leg on it and kind of lift it up. So a little bit more of a pain with that, but nothing you can't, uh, uh, overcome and then just make sure you got these tabs here and here they kind of go underneath the tail light so these little locking tabs here and then you pretty much like I said you can see you set it down on these things and then you just want to bring up and lock in up here both sides of the bumper here we are I have uh, these three or this bolt was already on there but uh, you had to knock in these uh, two seven millimeter bolts and then we're gonna have to get the four bolts over here three of them are actually four of them four seven millimeter bolts and i believe this one is a t15 i'll have to double check but i'm pretty sure the corner ones are t15s and um so this these two will be attaching to this uh plate here i guess it's like an exhaust shield plate of some sort that'll be going here and here these two will be going to this and then this one goes to this uh, in piece here and uh, but before you do that you might want to go ahead and plug all your plugs back in there's two on this side two big connectors and then you'll have the one kind of small you can see it maybe kind of a, almost looks like a, a coax cable or something looking cable there's one on this side make sure you get those plugged in before you start getting crazy mounting everything up and uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and knock these out and then we will uh, take a final look here inside the driver's side rear wheel well back corner area here and i just wanted to point out do not forget to install the seven millimeter bolts here if you have a collection of bolts and you didn't keep them separated this is i believe the smaller doesn't have a like a large wash around the bolt head and uh, don't go crazy on it just tighten it up it'll clean up the gap right here and then you have your of course two plugs here on the driver's side one coax looking plug on the passenger side and once you get these things plugged in it's going to be gray to gray black to black hit the red locking tabs and then of course you want to relock them into the body of the car on the little slots that keep them up out of the way and then on this side you can also see those little shields here that you're going to be bolting into uh, from the diffuser uh, upwards back under the car just want to show you guys real quick bolts all are in other than this t15 on the end and if you have the oem diffuser which probably most people have that should be no problem because a little bit of this fitment issues with the anderson composites uh diffuser this doesn't fit on the ends very well you know well and that pulls this screw out of well, I, mean, I, I could punch one through i'll just leave it out 
it's still solidly in place so if that's why you're wondering i have a missing screw it's going to be on the both sides same area it's because of that so if oem should be perfect all these bolts should be nice and tight don't you know over torque anything and break anything but and then make sure these little uh, I guess these are partial heat shields for your exhaust, aren't uh, rattling, so if you move it around really good, it shouldn't be bouncing off of your uh, exhaust or your uh, exhaust valve device here, so real good. So uh, yeah, we're going to get up top and put the little top caps over the lights and we should be good to go. We'll take a final look. Final little bit for taillight install. You got these little caps to go over the taillights. And as mentioned a few times, you have these little hooks on here, uh, kind of a hook. That actually interfaces in that little groove right there uh, where the bumper is. So you want to bring this in and kind of uh, get that to hook in. See how it's nice and tight there? And then you can drop it over the little rubber stopper here and kind of gear to fall into place. It's going to kind of lock in right here a little bit a little bit tight here around the stopper it depends on how high you have it up and I already went ahead and pushed this one down this one seemed like it fits a little bit better so just make sure there we go there you go it's going to kind of clip you might clip it, it has to make sure it's behind your tail light so we've got this nice little clean look here see how it flows around the tail lights nice and neat and then of course you're gonna get your little clips in here i'm gonna go ahead and pop these in and of course don't forget you're going to need to install your three t15s uh, on both sides to lock in your liner and we're back at the rear of the car and i wanted to cover a few things that are specific to the anderson composites rear diffuser at least things i ran into that i wanted to point out uh, that are a little bit above and beyond of what I covered in the footage of actually reinstalling the bumper, which goes on pretty smoothly. But I wanted to point out some uh, issues with the fit and finish of the diffuser. We kind of brushed on them earlier, but I want to show them to you on the car and some issues they actually <laughs> that happen because of it. Now, as you can see here, this diffuser is supposed to actually uh, wrap around the end of your bumper right here. As you can see here, it actually falls a little bit short. Uh, personally, I think they probably should have uh, extended the mold slightly, maybe a few millimeters on each side, and that would render most of the issues uh, null and void. Now, one of the issues with it not quite fitting right on the ends is now you cannot fit um, your ACS rock guards on. I have front and back ACS rock guards, and uh, yeah, they don't fit if you have uh, a misfit like this. So I'll show you guys real quick what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's see if I can grab the right one. I'm probably going to grab, uh, of course I grabbed, wait, maybe this is the right one. Okay. No, I'm completely blind. Wrong. <laughs> Rock guard. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm dumb twice here. 50, 50, 90. I picked it wrong two times. So, Okay, yeah, yeah, here we go. It actually sits like like this, as you can see here. Okay, and it fits flush with the bumper and actually flush and clips over the ZL1 diffuser. Now, it might not fit even um, if there was a perfect fit, but as you can see here, maybe with the, how the light is, it cannot obviously fit over over this and it actually has a huge gap it just doesn't sit on it quite right i mean i could probably just i mean it, you could say it works i think it looks bad i'm probably going to switch out uh, rock guards or something that just lays flat here and leave a little bit of gap but i uh, want to point that out so if you have acs rock guards most likely you're going to have to either kind of have a half half ass fit or um Swap them out for something else that doesn't have quite the perfect fit like ACS rock guards. Are, they don't, there's just no room for in the air with those rock guards in the back. And then on this side, this is the passenger side, you can see here I have a, kind of a funky gap right here. Um, <laughs> it does wrap over the side. So, hey, yeah, it wraps over the side. Nice, right? But it impacts up here. And so that actually pulls it away from the bumper a little bit. So you can kind of see that. 
and probably the same issue. I might not be able to get the rock guard on here, but obviously I'm not gonna run one style rock guard on one side and a different style on the other side. So, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, that's definitely, the fit on both sides is, is a good amount different just because of how it sits. So that might aesthetically change how it fits because this one, of course, fits up and around. So it probably sits a little higher. And then, you know, it's gonna sit a little bit lower over here because it actually snaps underneath it a little bit. Um, you know, not a huge deal. If I get a different rock guard, I'm thinking about maybe getting some carbon fiber ones, I'll have it sit kind of flush here. Maybe I'll put a piece of, um, you know, black foam, sticky foam or something in the little gap, kind of fill it up so you won't see it. As for the rest of the bumper, I mean, the fit and fit, the fitment's pretty good right here. I mean, perfect in the center, looks really good. I mean, the weave looks pretty good. Um, you see my smoked reflectors, they look pretty good. Of course, it's dusty um, <laughs> from sitting on my bench. I'll make sure I clean it when I actually detail the car. Another thing I wanted to point out, see the little screws coming out the bottom here? All right, we're gonna swing underneath the car. Uh, try not to be too crazy here. And this screw, this screw, just like the center screw, I think they screwed these too far down the diffuser. These little posts up here have a lip on them that's supposed to, I think, overhang and kind of like lock in the diffuser. Um, but because the holes are so low, they don't, they actually, the, the lips are actually underneath the diffuser and that actually pushes the diffuser too far down and bows it out really bad. So just like the center one mentioned in my video where I had to grind, cut the lip off and grind it down, I had to do that for these two as well. So I had to get the Dremel, cut the lip off and then kind of give it a little smoother finish. And then I was able to get the bolt on. And another issue because of the fit, I cannot get these, um, corner T15 bolts in. Uh, I mean, I could drill and just punch one through, but I just left them because it's, it's a solid, it's on there pretty solid. With the other screws, I was able to, to pull everything into place. So, I mean, I just left this one off of, on both sides. But uh, yeah, those are just things I wanted to point out, possible difficulties you may run into. And, you know, maybe you have to come up with a workaround for them. Maybe, maybe you'll have a better fitting one, maybe a worse. Uh, that's one thing about carbon fiber uh, molds and stuff there's room for error and you know, you're probably not gonna have a perfect fit. So if you have a body shop doing it, you probably they can probably, you know, work, work with it. But if you're just doing it on your own, you're probably gonna have to just, you know, settle kind of. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna get top side again and then uh, we'll take a final look at this and uh, we'll wrap it up. Here we have it. You know, overall I'm pleased with the, uh, the look uh, and the overall quality of the carbon fiber. Like I said, the big issues I have are regarding just the fit on the ends. Um, you know, if they maybe would modify their mold, just extend them out a couple extra millimeters. I'd rather have a little extra overhang than it to fall short, which it does on both sides, really. I mean, there's no way that I see that I can make this fit better. Uh, you know, I don't think I could sand down the carbon fiber, which I mentioned before to get it to fit closer into the bumper. Um, because I mean, then it would just still impact in areas like right here, which would prevent it from going any further anyways. So just a few extra millimeters on each side, maybe would, would, would make this a perfect fit. Um, yeah. So unfortunately I'm going to have to sell my ACS rock guards. If anybody wants a pair of front and back ACS rock guards in very good condition, a few thousand miles, hit me up. Uh, I'll sell it to you, you know, pretty cheap. And uh, I'm probably gonna go with, you know, a, a not quite as fitted, not quite as nice rock guard maybe, maybe carbon fiber ones to kind of blend, to cover up some of this imperfections on each side. And then I might just get some black foam to fill a little bit of the gap. You know, this side's the gap, top side isn't bad. The other side of the gap is pretty ugly because of how it pushes against the bumper. You know, right here, I don't, definitely don't like that. I might get some foam just to fill that void um make it look a little bit better you know i could dremel maybe chop that little corner off right there and have it fit a little bit more flush but i really don't want to start chopping stuff maybe potentially causing some cracks into the epoxy as for the weave of the carbon fiber you can see i mean it's pretty good it's pretty consistent 
Uh, no real complaints about the weave or the product itself. And that wraps up the install of the Anderson Composites rear carbon fiber diffuser. You know, overall, I'm, I'm satisfied with the look, the uh, overall finish, the quality of the carbon fiber. I had my questionable areas with the fit on the edges, which uh, I believe if they extended the mold, maybe a little bit, a couple millimeters on each side. And also the holes in the main portion of the center part of the diffuser probably need to be drilled, not quite so low to take into account these uh, the stabilizing braces or the mounting arms, wherever those are. And also to maybe look at the reflector mount. It's for whatever reason has two screw holes, even though I believe all six gen Camaro reflectors are a single screw and a clip. So it would need like a kind of a squarish looking cutout for the clip to clip onto. Instead, they put a screw hole. We, we kind of covered that, but uh, you know, thankfully I was able to mitigate it. So it's not a huge deal. My main concern are the ends. If you have an energy, you know, the ACS rock guards, they 99% chance they're not gonna work with it. Even if you happen to get a diffuser that's perfectly mounted, they're probably not going to fit just because of the thickness of the diffuser and the shape's a little bit bigger than the OEM one. So you're going to have to look at uh, maybe an, uh, a ZL1 add-ons or a True Fiber or one of the other brand rock cards that don't have that super precise fitment on the end. They kind of just sit, uh, you know, kind of with the liner. So I'm going to have to look at that. And, uh, you know, for longevity, hopefully this holds up. I think the carbon fiber felt pretty durable, pretty strong. Unfortunately, uh, the epoxy isn't um, on any carbon fiber of these pieces like this aren't, you know, super durable. They're not like a bulletproof vest. So rocks getting tossed on this have a good chance of, of damaging this. So I'm going to get a paint protective film coated. Hopefully I do it quick enough before I ding it up. Going to get ceramic coated, get those rock guards on there. I'll let you guys know which ones I go with. And uh, but overall, I think it looks great. It goes with my trunk, kind of off camera here. Looks awesome. They're both Anderson. I have an Anderson Composites trunk. I have an Anderson Composites diffuser. The front splitter, also Anderson Composites. And, uh, you know, the weave is real consistent between them. That's one of the good things about the Anderson uh, carbon fiber. And, uh, you know, overall, I would say it is a success. I'm satisfied with the look. Somewhat satisfied with the fit. <laughs> um, but uh, actually, I... From a, I checked out the Anderson Composites website recently. It says it's maybe discontinued, so maybe you can't even get one of these. Uh, but hopefully, this video was informative, not too boring. Sorry, it was kind of choppy. I had to merge this footage from the taillight install with this one regarding the bumper uh, removal and install. I didn't want to make you guys have to jump through multiple videos if you had no interest in the taillights uh, right here, the Umbra taillights. So if you're not interested in that, you can just watch this one video and hopefully get everything in it. Even though if you happen to watch both, you might see some shared footage regarding that. And, uh, you know, as always, feel free to comment. Let me know what you think, questions, uh, anything like that. Feel free to subscribe. Super helpful for the channel if you guys drop a subscription uh, on my uh, future videos. And uh, hit the bell if you want, all that fun stuff. I'm not sure all the fancy features YouTube has. And, uh, you know, go ahead and wrap this one up. And uh, as always, peace. Oh, <laughs> oh,